I don't know if I want to talk about this, but like, you know, how, how do you feel about what's currently happening now with, with people's oh. current attitudes regarding refugees? Is that something I should even be bringing I, up? Well, and it's totally up to And if you don't feel up to talking about that, it's taking me time. It's taking me time to have, um, Especially and a, in this community, thought. if you mm-hmm. had any particular thoughts on that. It was so emotionally draining. Um, and I don't think people realize that, especially this Bosnians have been in the Magic Valley for over 20 years. And so when this started, I'm telling you guys, it felt like deja vu. It's like all of a sudden you're like, you have animosity towards us. I thought we were working as hard as we could. I thought we were doing the things that were expected of us to learn your language, to learn your customs, to... Um, to be productive members of your society, and I believe we've done a very good job. And when all of a sudden this started to erupt, it was heartbreaking. It felt like um, it felt like again you didn't belong. It was it was really hard emotionally because you just wanted to look at him and say, "But we've been here." Like so, this is how it, again. It's just it's deja vu. Like that's how our war started. All of a sudden, we are to blame for all the miscauses and all the troubles in your world. We are somehow to blame, and it felt like it was happening again. And when I went to that forum that was at CSI, oh, I sat with all my friends that were from Bosnia, and we just you could feel the nervousness. And what was this forum exactly? It was a forum. They just people were just so concerned about how do they vet refugees? How are we going to be making sure that we as Twin Falls residents are safe with all these others coming in? And we're so concerned about possible um, terrorism, I guess. I don't really know where this all stemmed from. And I don't know how it got so quickly. It was like a wildfire, I felt like. It was like all of a sudden somebody sparked it and it just went like crazy and nobody wanted to take ownership of it to say we need to we need to hold on for a second let's look at what has happened in our community and how successful we've been within our integration why and and it was it was just hard you know and so the forum was attended to talk about to explain ourselves and that's the part that was really offensive it justify was like your existence. justify my existence in this community is how i felt about the experience it was like well how much crime do they do commit compared to the rest of the residents here? How much money are they taking from our schools? Um, How long are they utilizing our services? And all I could think of is my parents got a job here in a month, you know, and we've been contributing to other people. And I understand hardships. I'm a supporter of people needing, needing assistance when they have hardships. And so we had to explain our, our, our existence here. And it was really heartbroken. It was really um, hard for me because I experienced it with my friends. And yeah, my friends, and it was, it felt like a, like, betrayal. Yeah. I, I want to apologize uh, for no, 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 you can't. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. I know you I can't, can't because mm-hmm. it's, I have no um, control over other people's poor behavior. I don't. But you're brave and brilliant and beautiful, <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I, I don't. I know, I I know I belong here. You do. And and when that happened, More, it. I think then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it took me down a peg, and I was so. It was, at first, I was so emotionally caught up to it. I was so defensive, and I couldn't have conversations like this. Like if you asked me to do this a year ago, I was too vulnerable. I was too yeah. much in my emotions. It hurt too much, to be able to express myself in a way that I felt justified what I was feeling. And it's taken a really long time. And um, through those hard conversations and self-reflections is where I've gotten to. But it's it's taken a while. And I came to the conclusion is I belong here. And no one is going to tell me otherwise. And if people truly believe in what this community is about, this community is about pioneers. This, people, this community is about making um, something out of nothing. And that's what this new wave of refugees are doing they're making something out of out of what they have nothing my parents had two hundred dollars that's it like Mm -hmm. we didn't get the luxuries that people think somehow we do people would tell us at high school oh you guys have nice things because the government pays for you to live here (laughs) and i just remember like who is telling you these lies can i get this check then if the government's paying me to live here i stood in the wrong line yeah, I was like, "This where where is this?" Or they're like, "Oh, you guys have nice cars because they're you guys get those." And it was just the most crazy things. And you would experience it at a young age. And I remember when I was young, I was like, "Where are they getting this from?" 
my parents are working. My mom is riding her bike from downtown to Bridgeview at 4.30 in the morning so she can go and clean and make the beds for the elderly people. Where are you getting this? You know, and so it was interesting. We've had this fight our, our whole lives. It's just, it hasn't come as blatant as it did this in recent times. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's, it's a frustrating thing to, when you're talking about your friends and how they're basically, uh, you felt betrayed by what mm-hmm. they were saying. I mean, it not it, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to talk about this, but it's like, Every, when everything's fine, when everyone feels like everything is fine, the economy's working well, everybody's mm-hmm. just clicking mm-hmm. along, everybody's just, mm-hmm. and then things start to become more obviously dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. And people can kind of be, succumb to the underlying anxiety that our society might be feeling. Yeah. And then they start looking for scapegoats. I mean, it's mm-hmm. unfortunate. It's an it's a element of our it's humans. human nature, I <laughs> yeah, guess. And I mean, is. you could see the most extreme version of that, of course, is what you experience as a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the point where it becomes executions, Mm -hmm. war, Mm -hmm. violence breaking out in Mm -hmm. what would otherwise be a peaceful Mm -hmm. village, community Mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I imagine for you in particular, seeing, it's hard for me to imagine living in Twin Falls that it could turn into that, right? Same. (laughs) You know, but at the same time, I mean, could, would people have said the same thing in where you were living or would they they have felt the same way? I don't want people in this community to think somehow they're different for backlashing. Mm -hmm. I don't don't want people to think that because I think that's common. Um, I think our country um, has been guilty of it too. Mm -hmm. You know, like we had our stereotypes. We had our prejudice as well. We didn't treat people. We have pockets of times where we didn't treat people right either. But it's different when you're on the other side of it, right? When there's a power dynamic. And so when you're in power and when you're in control, it doesn't feel like you're violating someone's rights as much. But then when you're on the receiving end of it, it's like, whoa, this feels, this doesn't feel good. It's like Mm -hmm. you don't consciously think about your human rights until they've been violated. Mm -hmm. You know? And so I think everyone's capable of doing this, whether it's somebody that's, um, um, from a small country in Europe like myself or somebody who just might have come from like Burma or something mm-hmm. I don't know I think it's humans um, we have faults we, we, human, human, humans are and that's what's beautiful about us at the same time though is through that backlash I think people started to think I need to reflect on this and to really think about is this really conducive to my values and I think if anything um, as much as there was concern, there was just as much love, you know, outpour of love, people really going out of their way to tell me that knew I was a refugee that said, um, I want you to know that you are valuable and, and, and I care about you and you mean a lot to me and I'm glad that you're here. And, and sometimes um, we take those comments for granted. You know, we might feel like it, mm. but sometimes we just don't tell each other that enough. And so I think from that backlash and from that, animosity that felt I also felt a lot of love I really did I felt a lot of love I felt a lot of compassion from people um because like you said when things are going fine no one even really knew no one even really was concerned about you know 15 years ago no one was really concerned about the refugee process Mm -hmm. I can't tell you one person to say oh well how did you guys get here how was your vaccination looking like how how did you screen how many how many times did you interview like people weren't asking those questions All of a sudden, people become very concerned sure. in the process. <laughs> Things are going maybe how they wanted to. They have some concerns in their life, and so they, they're trying to figure out what does this mean, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, I'll be really honest, and I don't know if this is going to be popular to say, but our advantage is we were white. Mm-hmm. And if anybody doesn't think that, um, I'd like to have a conversation with them about that because we came still. I'm st- I understand my privilege even as a refugee. Mm-hmm. I understand that me being Western, European, and white has helped me integrate in this community a lot easier and it also helped this community to be like all right well you know mm-hmm. they kind of look like us maybe internally i wasn't feeling the same stuff but i look like you and so it's maybe not as intimidating and i think now that we have refugees and refugees is it's situational it's not like a work visa it's um it's based when conflict is going on so when conflict dies down those refugees stop coming in that's why you don't see any new bosnians coming in our conflict has has slowed down and people are visiting and restoring and hopefully getting our country back in track but people that might look now different um, than you i think it becomes this other and people aren't exactly sure what that means and i think people would be surprised to know that 
they want the same thing as residents here. They want their kids to go to school. They want their kids to get a good job and to support their family. And most importantly, they want to be safe. They don't want to have another repeat.